The AH-64 Apache is probably the most famous and definitely one of the best attack helicopters in the world. It has been refined through 40 years of combat experience. But with modern anti-aircraft systems and the rise of drone warfare, could this legendary aircraft and even the entire attack helicopter concept be coming to an end? We'll try to explain that today through the Apache story. It all began in the Korean War, when helicopters were first used for transport. Then, someone had the idea to fire from helicopters at the enemy, initially using standard infantry weapons. Later, the French experimented with unguided rockets. However, the first real step toward a dedicated attack helicopter came when the experimental 1st Cavalry Air Mobile Division was sent to Vietnam to test a new tactic. Using helicopters to insert troops directly into combat, the need to protect the unarmed transport Hueys was quickly realized. That led to the creation of a makeshift Huey gunship that would show the potential of an armed helicopter. At first, gunship Hueys were usually armed with just two M60 machine guns, but soldiers then improvised, adding miniguns, grenade launchers, even 50 caliber machine guns and rocket pods. However, the Huey was never designed for direct combat, and with the added weight of weapons and ammo, it couldn't keep up with transport helicopters and protect them throughout the entire mission. But it showed how effective gunships could be, and the US military began working on a helicopter built specifically for this role, one that would be faster, more agile, and far more heavily armed. That's how the AH-1 Cobra was born, the world's first true attack helicopter. During its turbulent time in the Vietnam War, about 300 Cobras were lost, but the hard-learned lessons would help shape future attack helicopters. However, no one could predict how much and how fast the battlefield would change. After Vietnam, the US Army started a project to replace the Cobra with a new attack helicopter, which was supposed to be the AH-56 Cheyenne. But due to many issues, the project was eventually cancelled in 1972, and a new program was launched that would eventually lead to the Apache. Using lessons from the Vietnam War and with the Soviet Union amassing huge numbers of tanks and armored vehicles, the Apache would be slower than the Cobra, but with a focus on armor, firepower, and night fighting capabilities, which turned out to be far more important on the battlefield than speed. The first AH-64 Apaches were ready in 1984, with an average cost of almost $14 million per unit. Five years later, it saw combat for the first time when war broke out in Panama. Right away, its expensive night vision systems, thermal imaging, and Hellfire missiles proved to be extremely effective. Now, to better understand how modern anti-aircraft threats affect the Apache today, we first need to see just how impressive its technology, weapons, and defenses are. The Apache is armed with some of the most destructive and precise weapons ever mounted on a helicopter. Its 30mm chain gun is mounted beneath the fuselage and linked to the helmet-mounted sighting system, allowing both the pilot and gunner to aim just by looking at the target. This cuts reaction time drastically. The chain gun fires high-explosive dual-purpose rounds with extreme accuracy, and just one hit within 13 feet of an enemy is lethal. The rounds can also punch through light armor and fortified positions, and it carries 1,200 of them, firing at a rate of 300 rounds per minute. The Apache was designed to be used differently from the Cobra. Instead of flying low in strafing runs, spraying unguided rockets, autocannon or machine gun fire, the Apache would hover at a safe distance, staying out of enemy sight. Then, it would use its advanced targeting systems and weapons to attack from long range. Using its sensors, the Apache could fly at full speed just five feet off the ground, avoiding enemy radars and surface-to-air missile systems before unexpectedly popping up to attack. Its 30mm autocannon is accurate within a 20-meter radius at 4,000 meters, which is an incredible level of precision, and the Hellfire missiles could hit targets up to 10 kilometers away. The effect on an unsuspecting enemy, suddenly hit by rockets and shells raining down from nowhere, was horrific. In 1991, the Apache led the way in Operation Desert Storm, flying deep into enemy territory to destroy radar stations and air defense systems, clearing the way for US Special Forces to be inserted behind enemy lines. During the operation, Apaches destroyed more than 500 Iraqi tanks and vehicles, while only one Apache was shot down by an RPG. The pilots, however, survived the hit, crash-landed, and made it out alive. The Apache can also carry up to 16 AGM-114 Hellfire missiles, each one powerful enough to destroy heavily armored targets with its 9-kilo warhead. They are laser-guided, locking onto a target and tracking it all the way to impact, more than capable of obliterating any main battle tank on the battlefield. Its four hardpoints allow the Apache to customize its weapons for different missions. It can also carry Hydra 70 unguided rockets, which are fired in volleys and are especially useful against entrenched enemy positions and bunkers. The Apache can even carry AIM-92 Stinger air-to-air -air missiles, giving it the ability to engage enemy helicopters and low-flying aircraft. 
The Longbow radar system, mounted above the rotor, allows the Apache to detect, track, and prioritize multiple targets at once. This fire control radar can track up to 128 enemy targets at the same time and engage 16 of them at once. It also works in any weather, seeing through fog, rain, and smoke. One of the most common combat tactics is the pop-up attack. The Apache flies low to the ground, hiding behind a hill, building, or terrain feature, then quickly rises just long enough to lock onto a target and fire before dropping back into cover. Since Hellfire missiles are fire and forget, the Apache doesn't need to stay exposed. It launches the missile and disappears before enemy air defenses can react. In urban warfare, the Apache's precision allows it to engage enemies with minimal collateral damage. It can fire in close proximity to friendly troops when needed, something that artillery or airstrikes cannot do safely. However, it would cause some controversy because the Apache's weapons are linked to gun cameras that record every shot fired. This led to the release of the infamous collateral murder video showing two Apaches attacking Iraqi civilians, among many other incidents that caused controversy over the Apache's use in combat. But that goes with every weapon ever used, it's just usually impossible to document it, like artillery or airstrikes. Since attack helicopters are prime targets on the battlefield because of the firepower they bring, the Apache has its own protection systems. But would they be enough for today's modern threats? One of the biggest threats to helicopters on the battlefield is shoulder-fired heat-seeking missiles, also known as man-portable air defense systems, such as the Russian Igla or the American Stinger. They lock onto the hot exhaust of an aircraft and home in on its heat signature. Because they are portable, like an RPG, they can be fired from anywhere on the battlefield and are dangerous at altitudes up to 6,000 meters. The Apache counters this with an infrared suppression system, which makes it much harder for missiles to lock on. The most advanced version of this system is called Black Hole. It disperses heat from the engines, making it extremely difficult for infrared-guided missiles to lock on. There are also active countermeasures that can trick or disable incoming missiles. The common missile warning system detects incoming missile launches in real time, immediately alerting the crew and triggering countermeasures. The most common ones are flares and chaff, which confuse heat-seeking or radar-guided missiles by creating false targets. Another major threat comes from radar-guided anti-aircraft systems, like the Russian Book or the S-300, which can detect and destroy aircraft from over 300 kilometers away. To counter this, the Apache's radar warning receiver constantly scans for enemy radar signals. If an enemy radar starts tracking the Apache, the system alerts the crew, showing exactly where the threat is coming from. This allows the pilots to change course, drop altitude, or use terrain for cover. Even when all active defenses fail and the Apache takes a hit, it's not easy to kill. The cockpit and vital systems are protected by composite armor plating, which can stop armor-piercing rounds up to 23 mm, the most common Soviet-made caliber used in anti-aircraft guns. The bottom of the cockpit is reinforced, giving extra protection against gunfire from below, and the fuel tanks are self-sealing, meaning if they get punctured, they automatically patch up to prevent fuel from leaking. Then, when everything else fails, the Apache is designed to crash land in a way that gives the crew the best chance of survival. Its crash-resistant landing gear absorbs impact, preventing complete destruction of the helicopter and giving the pilots a chance. However, despite all of these impressive weapons and defense systems, attack helicopters remain some of the most vulnerable aircraft on the battlefield, and that is exactly because the enemy knows how effective they are. Advanced long-range anti-aircraft systems and the widespread use of portable air defense missiles now cover most of the battlefield airspace. As seen in Ukraine, many helicopters have been shot down this way or forced to fly low to the ground, which brought them within range of small arms fire. The Apache continues to evolve in this cat-and-mouse game, but there are clear signs that the era of expensive, high-tech combat helicopters is coming to an end. They are likely to be replaced by something much cheaper, easier to operate and available in greater numbers, like drones. Drones can now deliver precision firepower at a fraction of the cost, without risking the lives of highly trained pilots or exposing secretive, extremely expensive technology. In Ukraine, helicopters are struggling to survive against modern air defenses, while drones continue to destroy troops, equipment, and even the most modern tanks, with no practical solution to stop them in sight. Technology is advancing at an extreme pace, and the question is, how expensive attack helicopters will compete with cheap, numerous, and highly effective weapons like drones?